Hello there. This is Vision Eternity Ministries. My name is Lee Klein, and we are talking about getting ready for Jesus. He's about to return, and we are learning how to be ready. Let's acknowledge him. Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you care about us so much, that it's not your will that one should perish, and so that you're giving us the wisdom that we need to know that we're not ready and the understanding we need to be ready. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for showing us your feelings, your thoughts, and your concerns. We love you and praise you and give you all the glory in your name. So yesterday we talked about for better, for worse, for rich, or for poor, and we were talking about all that God has gone through, the suffering that he has gone through for his children because we reject him. We're rejecting him over and over again by not acknowledging him, taking him seriously, giving him the honor due to him. And, and so all this time, he's still loving us anyway. He's faithful, even though we're not faithful. In yesterday's teaching, we were talking about being faithful to him. Even though sometimes it gets bad, it's hard, we're rejected as he is, when we take his side, he's saying, will you go through, will you fight that good fight of faith for better, for worse, for rich, or for poor? It was a good teaching. If you haven't heard it, I encourage you to go listen. And today he said to me, till death do us part. I knew what he was talking about because at one time I said, Lord, how long? Nobody's listening. Nobody cares. Nobody's on the same page as I am, it seems. And um, he led me to Isaiah. And Isaiah 6, 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, Lord, send me. And he said, Go and tell his people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, and perceive not. Make the heart of his people fat, and let their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, least they can see with their eyes. So in other words, just in case they can see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, convert, and be healed. Then I said, How long, Lord? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And what he's saying is till death do us part. Can you imagine what it will be like when we're out of the presence of God? Do you know what hell is like? Have you, have you heard stories? The rich man in purple was asking for just a drop of water, just a drop of water. And he asked that someone go tell his brothers that they don't want to come here. You know, people know God. We talked about that but they don't honor God. They don't understand this time will come, all the things that they take for granted now. I often lay in my bed and think how comfortable it is and, and think of those people who take all that for granted and, and won't choose God and eventually will end up in hell where there is no grace, no comfort, no peace. You're not going to be making plans anymore to do fun things. You're going to be asking for a drop of water. There's not going to be any love there. No churches, no time to repent. It's going to be over with. It's going to be sorrow, weeping, and gnashing of teeth. I've, I've heard stories, scary, scary stories about hell, which I'm not going to tell you today. But you can go on YouTube, you know, sometimes we need to be frightened into making the right choice. So go ahead and go on YouTube and listen to the people that God took to hell so they could come back and tell you what it's like to show you that that is not where you want to live for, for forever and, and to show you the realness of what is going to happen. The Bible tells us Jesus is going to come. And he's going to take those who chose him out of the earth. The earth is going to burn. 
Yeah, I was telling some girls that were walking one day, speaking of God being mocked and, and not honored, and I was telling them Jesus was coming and the earth was going to burn, and they started laughing at me and said, well, then we'll just jump in the water. Not understanding the power of God, no one will escape judgment on that day. We have to choose good or evil, and if we're not choosing God, we're not choosing good. And we don't even understand what is so bad about the people that God calls evil because we don't know God. He doesn't reveal himself except to the person who will choose him. God showed me that he's frustrated. He's doing good. He, he, he's stretching his arm out to us. He's beckoning us. He's trying to get our attention. And yet we keep turning away from him. We're not taking him seriously. He told me he was frustrated with me. He said, will you go for me? I said, yeah, I'll go for you. But then I kept quitting and giving up. I didn't do that for better, for worse, for richer, for poor. Because it got too hard, the persecution. And like Isaiah, I said, how long? And, and it, it just didn't seem like anything was happening. And, and it doesn't seem like anything's happening, but the word will come to pass. The word is a prophecy. Jesus is telling us things to come. It doesn't look like it's happening. It doesn't look like it will happen. But like the rich man in hell said, go tell my brothers it's really here. It's really there. And they don't want to come here. And Jesus wants you to know ahead of time that you don't want to live in hell. Hell isn't even meant for us. It grieves him that we're choosing evil. Hell is meant for the devil and his angels, not for God's children. And, and just remember, the only thing that's going to be happening there is suffering. Reaping what you've sowed. Just suffering. Thirsting. You don't want to go there. Heaven is going to be more than you can ask or think. Glorious, good kindness, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more pain, the complete opposite of hell. Peter says, 2 Peter 3, 9, that Jesus is long-suffering. It's not his will that one should perish. And that's why he said, least one would be converted in Isaiah. How long, Lord? He's not willing that one should perish. He'll, he's willing to go after one lost person. Luke 15, I want to read to you. The tax collectors and notorious, especially wicked sinners were all coming near to Jesus to listen to him. And the Pharisees and scribes kept muttering and indignantly complaining, saying, this man accepts and receives and welcomes wicked sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, what man of you, if he has a hundred sheep, should lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that one that, that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he gets home, he summons together his friends, his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep which is lost. Thus I tell you, there be more joy in heaven over, heaven over one especially wicked person who repents, changes his mind, and his errors and misdeeds and determines to enter upon a better course of life than over 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. So to go after that one lost, that's what God is doing. And you know, to go after that one lost one, he has to beckon us to do our part. Will you go for me, saith the Lord? Will you go for me just in case that one person would change their mind? Well, he knows the one that will change his mind. But he's having trouble finding people to even go for him. Will you go for him? Will you go for him so that one person doesn't enter into eternal damnation? Will you keep trying? Will you just keep trying to get to that one person in your life that seems so hard to get to? Don't give up. But do what God asks you to do. Who 
who will go for me? Who will go for me? You don't want your worst enemy to go to hell. Eternal suffering. Think about it. Do unto that person what you would want done to you. Unto you. I always think of this man who told the story that God motivated him with. Um, I believe it was a vision, and, and he and all the Christians were on one side of the abyss, and those who were lost were on the other side. And they were yelling, and his friends were yelling out to him, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? I don't think we're going to get away with that. Jesus said that we have to care about each other and love. And if you don't care enough to tell someone about Jesus, then are you ready? Are you ready to stand before him? Will he say, away from me, I never knew you? You who practice lawlessness? Forgive that person that hurts you over and over. Get over it. Think about eternity. Till death do us part. Can you imagine not being around God anymore forever? Can you imagine being off the path and having nowhere to turn? Right now we are in a time of grace and we have a place to go. I can go to my sister. She knows Jesus. My brother knows Jesus. When you're in hell, it's too late. It's over with. That's why God hasn't come yet, because he loves us that much. And he wants you to know his love so that you can love that person that doesn't know him, so that they won't have eternal damnation, but they'll have eternal life with Jesus. Till death do us part will be the end. There'll be the new heaven and the new earth, for those of us who cared about what God cares about. Do you care about what God cares about? Do you care about that person in your life that you know is going to hell because of you, you just know they don't know Jesus and they're going to hell? I've heard plenty of people say, well, that's their problem. I don't care. If you don't care then you don't love. And if you don't love, then you're headed to the same place they are. The more you know, the more is expected of you. we got to just stop sitting around feeling sorry for ourselves and get up and do the work. Get up and do that work. Show who Jesus is. Jesus said, I'm leaving, and you're going to do my work. You're going to do greater things than I did even. But we won't. We won't do it. We're thinking about ourselves. We're selfish. Examine yourself. Let Jesus correct you. Revelation 3.19, he corrects those he dearly and tenderly loves. Get on your knees every day and let him correct you. Revelation 3.20, he said he's knocking on the door of your heart. And if you would invite him in, then he would come in. If you would heed his voice. You've got to do what he's telling you to do. Will you go for him? Will you do his work? Nobody wants to be separated from God, from love, from smiles and joy and peace. We don't want to be separated from him. Nobody wants that. We need to care. We need to care because God cares. And if you love, then you're doing the will of the Father. If you won't, you're not. And he's going to say, I didn't know you. You know, that's one of his definitions of evil, is to not care, to not love, to only be concerned about yourself. He's not like that. He cares. If he didn't care, he would have come already. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he hasn't come yet because too many people would perish. It's not as well that even one of his children perish. You can change somebody's life 
by just telling them the truth, being there for them. Work your way into their life and love them. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you and praise you. You're so good to us. Help us to have understanding. Help us to do your work so just in case there's somebody in our life we can affect for you, we can do that. We love you. We praise you. And we commit to do your will. So we're asking that you do come and live on the inside of us. We're answering that knock with, I will, I do. Till death do us part. We will love and cherish you. We will go through what you're going through because we care about you. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for teaching us the truth, showing us it's not just a prayer, but it's a commitment. We're committed to you to be your bride, to do your work uh, right up until the end bringing heaven on the earth, doing your will, not our own. We love you and praise you give you all the glory. If you said that prayer, I'm so excited for you, and I know Jesus is excited, and he wants to come and make his home within you. The Father wants to come and make his home within you, show you who he is, be committed to you, be so faithful. Let us be so faithful. Thank you so much for listening today, and God bless.